Hi all, this is the Make Even badging video for stick welding. Stick welding is one of the most common kinds of welding around the world. It is making a super simple short circuit between an electrode and uh, your workpiece. Uh, the sticks, we have them right up here on the shelf. So we have a few different kinds. Obviously, you're welcome to grab other kinds that, that you might want. So I'm just going to show you what they look like. So these are the sticks. They're a piece of metal and they're coated in flux. So what happens is when you strike an arc uh, with your piece of metal, so you have the one end called the stinger of your welding machine hooked up to the metal end here, and then you have your work clamp clamped to your work, and you touch it, it forms a short circuit, the electricity flowing, and right at the end, creating an arc. So sometimes it's called arc welding. Technically, MIG and TIG and other forms of welding also have arcs, so that's why I call it stick welding, but often it will be called arc welding. One really nice thing about arc welding is you can do it outdoors very easily. There's no gas required, and the flux, this stuff, as it burns off, creates a cloud of gas to protect the weld from oxygen while it's molten and cooling. Um, so that makes this a really good process for outdoors. That also means it creates a lot of smoke, which means to be really good about the smoke collector, the fume extractor. So that's, that's the idea behind the stick. There are lots of different kinds of sticks, so you'll read on the boxes of exactly what kind of welder you should use it with and what processes and what positions and all that kinds of stuff, what materials. The two welders we have here are a DC welder, which is the better kind. Um, and then we have an AC welder, also known as a buzz box or tombstone underneath. Um, and that is just taking AC electricity and, uh, and using that directly to weld. Um, so in terms of safety, it's a lot of the similar stuff to the other kinds of welding. This creates a lot of very powerful light. So you need to make sure to have all your skin covered or else you'll get a, a sunburn, a, a burn very quickly. Uh, your eyes need to be well protected with glasses and also with a welding shield. Um, the ones we have dim automatically, so you need to make sure to set the shade to the proper shade for this, which is probably the highest on there. Uh, and that will make sure that you're well protected. Um, you don't want to have anything synthetic on. So if you're wearing synthetic pants or shoes, if you're wearing like running sneakers, it'll just melt right through. The, the dripping metal will just melt right through and go right in your shoe, which is really not fun. Uh, we have jackets here and uh, all the sort of top gear, but it's important that you have pants and closed shoes, preferably leather or something like that. Um, a lot of the things are going to be very hot when you're done, so be very mindful about what you're touching, wearing gloves. We have really heavy-duty gloves here for stick welding so that you can be, you can touch things safely. As I mentioned before, it creates a lot of smoke and fumes. So you want to make sure to use the fume extractor and get it in a place where it isn't in your way, but it is doing as much of the collecting as possible. Lastly, you need to make sure to recognize that this has an electric potential when it's connected to the stinger, which I'll show you shortly. So if you, know, if you just put it down on the table or something, it's still live and it can still shock you. So you need to be very careful about having, you know, keeping the table dry, having your clothes be dry, so you aren't inadvertently conducting electricity. And when you put this down, disconnect it from the stinger when possible. Um, and if not, just make, be sure, very mindful and conscious about not resting this on something where it's going to strike an arc and start welding when you don't want it to. All right, so that's the basic safety stuff. So now we're going to come around here and look directly at the machines. I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. It's a little easier to see. All right, so um, there are a few options here. So AC is the cheapest, easiest, or maybe not easiest, but cheapest. So you'll see this pretty commonly around. Each of these setups, this is the plasma. This is not related. We're just looking at these two. Um, but each of these has three sort of sets of wires coming off of it. So we'll start, um, I guess we'll start with this guy. And so the wires coming off of this are these front three, and then each of those are on the sides. So this has power, plugs right up into the wall. This is the stinger, so this is what holds your electrode. And then this is your work clamp, so that clamps onto the work to form the circuit. So those are the three wires that we're going to need. 
here you can select how much electricity it's going to put through the guy. Um, and you sort of just modulate that depending on how thick your electrode is, how thick your material is, how quickly you're trying to put down material. And AC electricity is alternating current. So it's, that's why it's called a buzz box because it just sounds like zzz as it, the electricity bounces back and forth. And oftentimes it make, makes a not very good weld because the electricity is constantly flowing backwards and forwards. So it's not very consistent. So the nicer version of that is the DC stick welder. And here you can choose DC electrode positive or DC electrode negative. And that controls which way the electricity is flowing and it's flowing only in one direction. So it creates a more consistent weld that isn't bouncing all over the place, which can be pretty frustrating. Um, so that in general, uh, I would recommend using this one. There might be circumstances where you wanna use the red one. You're welcome to play around and, and figure out which ones you want. Each electrode is for a certain type of electricity. So on it, it will say whether it's for AC, DC electrode negative or DC electrode positive or all three or some combination thereof. And so it's important to make sure to match up the electrode with the tool that you're using and the setting that it's on. Um, so we're not going to like go over how to use each of these individually because they're very, very similar. So we'll, we'll just use this one because it's a little more complicated. So the only thing I'm going to show you on, on the AC welder is just that the on switch is down here, on off. Um, you control the amperage here. There's really not much more to it. So then in terms of this guy, in terms of the top one, uh, DC electrode positive, and you can see there's a, a big positive thing here. So you could take this. So on uh, here, we can see that we can choose between DC electrode negative and positive by switching these clamps. So you might be able to see down here, there's a big plus, and here there's a negative. DC electrode positive would be the electrode. So this one going to the stinger, that would be putting this on positive. If you wanted it to be DC electro negative, you would just swap them like this. So nothing, nothing crazy there. So we're gonna keep it on um, positive just for the minute. And the difference between, I mean, you can go much deeper into all these things, but in general, the difference between DC electrode positive and negative is that electrode positive gets better penetration and is cleaner and electro negative in general is more splattery and gets worse penetration but puts down more material. So that's the difference between the two of them. Uh, electro positive is also called reverse polarity and um, electro negative is called straight polarity. So just some of the words that you might hear and help influence your decisions. These are 330 seconds, which is like a normal size. Electrode 6013 is a really common electrode and the information on the box is useful is on the back side. It's going to be useful for us. So it says recommended amperage um, for 16th. So this is eighth inch metal that we have over here. It says 70 to 110 amps. And here it says it can do DC electrode positive, negative, or AC, any of the above. So now we're going to put on the safety gear that we need for stick welding. So we're going to go out to the safety gear area and look at that. So obviously we're going to put on a jacket. We have a few different sizes here. We're gonna put on a welding cap. This goes backwards to protect the back of your neck or and or over ears to stop bits of metal from splattering into them. Put this guy up. And then on the uh, face shields, we have a few different settings that we can look at. So on the sides, you can sort of come up here and see right on the side of it. We have three settings, weld, cut, and grind. So we're welding, so it's pushed all the way up. And then we want the maximum uh, shade setting. So here we're set to weld, so it's the higher of the numbers. So in this case, 13, which is good. The delay is how long it stays shaded after you stop welding. So that as the material cools, uh, and it's still bright, bright red and off, putting off a lot of UV, it still is protecting your eyes. And then the sensitivity is this bottom knob. So I'm just going to leave delay up. Sensitivity is if you're out in the sun, you want to turn the sensitivity down so that it isn't getting turned on by the sun all the time. Let's put this on. I have long cotton pants on and shoes that should protect my feet. So this, you just open it up all the way, get on your head, tighten it down, 
and you're good to go. All right, so we're going to grab gloves over here. Uh, there are special super heavy um, stick gloves if you want those. Um, but these should do the trick. So we have that, and then we're just going to grab the fume collector and bring that over here. Okie dokie. And so one of the benefits of stick welding is you don't need to have super clean material uh, for it to work well. So we're just going to leave it bare and that should be fine. Um, it does leave a layer of slag. So versus MIG or TIG with stick um, and flux core, when you weld, you put down a layer, there's a layer of slag on top. And so that's a protective coating. And what you need to do when you're done is just chip that off either when so that when you lay down the next layer, it's going connecting metal to metal, or when you're done, just so you can then paint it or grind it or whatever you want to do. And to do that, we'll just grab it so you can see it. You're just going to use this special chipper hammer just to scrape and knock off the, uh, the slag. So the on switch for this welder is in the back, and we're going to plug it in first because that tends to help. Okay, there we go. Uh, so the lights on here, this is obviously power, and then this is just an over temperature light. So if you weld for too long, it'll come on and just need to shut down for a bit to let itself cool off. Uh, we're gonna put on the work clamp onto our material. and grab the stinger or the electrode clamp or whatever you want to call it and in here there's a bunch of different orientations that you can put the electrode in so uh, we're just going to put it in straight for now just like that uh, and now it's live so you need to be careful about where what we touch it to i'm going to turn on the extractor over here we need to set the current on the machine so on the box, it said 70 to 110. So we'll put it at 90. And since it's plugged into 240 volts, we're looking at the blue outer circle. So 90 is right about there. So when you're starting a weld, there are two ways of starting it. There's a scratch, so you can sort of scratch it or you can whack it onto the material. Either way, you're trying to knock off that first layer of flux um, so that you can start doing the weld. Often what will happen is you'll stick it. So when you start, it'll just stick right to the metal and it won't, uh, then you have to like break it off and try again. So uh, I'm definitely not a welding expert. So I'll, I'm probably going to stick the electrode, but that's sort of the technique that you need to develop. All right. There are two sort of families of welding. You can either um, do what are called stringers, which are straight lines, or you can weave back and forth. If you want to build up from a bevel, you can do stringers back and forth, or you can weave back and forth to all kinds of cool shapes. The goal is to have a sort of fine spatter, um, nice, even, consistent welds. And what you can also do is do a little tack welds. So you can just do a little tacks in the corners to hold something in place. So then when you do the longer welds, it's already held in place for you. So I'm just going to take this out so it doesn't spark on the table. Is you're just going to use the slag hammer. Just to knock off the slag. And then we're just going to put everything away. So we're gonna hit the power switch in the back and coil up the cords. Something else is there's the manual is right here. And there are a lot of good tips in there and pictures uh, and descriptions for you know, the angle and when you're pushing versus pulling, a lot of the sort of finer details of stick welding. So those would be good to, um, good to check out. And we're just gonna make sure to put everything away, clean up the slag that's bopped around. Uh, the sticks are, are pretty cheap, so um, you know if there's a sizable 
piece left, you can put it back, but once you're down to just a, you know, two or three inches, you can just throw that away. No need to worry about getting down to the very last little nub. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a wrap on stick welding. Thanks for watching.